Grace and peace to you. I know it's been a busy week uh, in a um, with the horse race, and it's the first uh, Kentucky Derby that I really uh, uh, kind of miss it. Even I was attending two different uh, parties yesterday, but I still don't have a clue who won. So uh, if you can bring me uh, up to date on that, I would appreciate it. Not now, but sometimes later. So I would appreciate it. We've been talking and we've been sharing about horses all week long and longer than that. Uh, but this morning I would like to do something different. And <clears throat> would like to share a few words about uh, what does it mean to walk before the Lord. Of course, this is the fourth uh, Sunday of Easter, and we are still considering what all happened uh, when Jesus was put to the cross and when he died for us on the cross and then when he rose again uh, and, and earning a victory for us. And what does it mean to us? I believe and I hope you still remember what the songwriter says in this Psalm 116. That is one of the most beautiful songs indeed. If you want to have wonderful devotional reading, uh, this is one of those psalms to read. I don't think there's a bad psalm to read anyway, but this is one of those uplifting psalms that you may want to read once in a while. When the psalmist opened his eyes uh, to behold the beauty of God's goodness to him. And when something like that opens up for you, and you realize that God is nothing but all the way good. There's no bad things about God. But God is good and he is good all the time. Then his writer, his heart responded by loving God more completely than he had done previously. Ever before. And this is what is going to happen to you and to me. When we realize how good God is. And your heart is full of his presence and full of gratitude towards him. And then you fell in love with him more than ever before. Now this psalm writer, he rejoiced, he rejoiced in the abundance of God's goodness to him in both spiritual and physical. Once in a while here in the service, we ask if somebody, some of you have re, I, I have reason to be thankful. It's the praise. And then we start hearing uh, one thing after another. Sometimes it's pretty quiet. Makes you wondering if there is anything good going on in the life of this church. Then we go home, <clears throat> excuse me, and then we start writing things down. And we remember. And we realize how God, good God has been to us. Now, among the decisions that he made, this songwriter, was that of choosing to walk before the Lord in the land of the living. When Bible used the word walking before the Lord, it really means that walking with the Lord. If somebody is standing from the distance and the distance from you, <coughs> and you want to tell him something, maybe you want to invite him coming closer maybe you want to share something with him because of the distance he don't hear you he doesn't hear you or she doesn't hear you then you invite him to come a little bit closer for you to to communicate better and this is what God is doing to us this morning he's asking you to walk before him so that you can hear his voice you can follow him better and so that you can fill in love with him again, even this morning. We find many encouragements to walk and talk with God as we study the Bible. And we are people who believe in the Bible and we are people who follow the Bible. It is also recorded, I just realized this morning as I was reading something what the Bible says, at this and what I have already prepared, what Bible says about about walking with God. In Genesis 6, 9, 
Noah walked with God. It just said shortly and briefly, <clears throat> Noah walked with God. He walked with God. <coughs> Abraham was instructed by God to walk before, before God. God promised to walk among people. In Leviticus 26, 12, he says, <coughs> I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. God promised to walk with us, but he's also asking us to walk with him. <coughs> Paul, Apostle Paul challenged the Christians in Rome <coughs> to walk in the newness, excuse me, to walk in newness of life. If sometimes we feel that we, we need to renew our relationship with the Lord, maybe somebody here in the sanctuary this morning, you have distanced yourself from the Lord. <clears throat> and you can't say that you are walking before Him, means that you are close to Him. You can see Him, you can hear what He says to you. You have distanced yourself from the Lord. Then Paul encourages his people to walk in newness of God. If you walk with the Lord and before Him, you walk in newness of His life. To Christians in Colossae, he said, <clears throat> Walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. There's only one way to grow in the knowledge of God, that you walk before Him. You communicate with God and you let Him speak to you. Sometimes people who never read the Bible knows everything about it. It scares me. It scares me. They're acting that they know everything about this book. I feel that the more I should know about this book, the more, the letter, the, the, the less I know about this book. I really feel. When I was in the beginning of my preaching career, I believe that there is, there is nothing in this book that I know, that I don't know, excuse me. And I, 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 as a young preacher, I thought that <clears throat> any question people ask, I need to explain it to them, make sure that they got it right because they don't know it. Now I feel comfortable saying that I don't know. I don't have the final word about it. But I promise to study about it, and I promise to seek to it. Look to it, into it. Maybe I will learn something about it. But if you are to grow in the knowledge of God, you better be walking before the Lord by studying His Word. Only one way to do it. In writing to the Ephesians, Paul detailed the Christian's walk in a manner of, that commands both our imagination and enthusiasm. But first of all, <clears throat> We are encouraged to walk worthy of our Christian vocation. Not often we talk about vocations. You say, well, preachers may have vocations and Sunday school teachers maybe have their vocations. But, Timo, I don't have no voc vocation. I don't have Christian vocation. What that I believe is nothing that important. But yes, you have. And we are encouraged to walk uh, worthy of our Christian vocation. Listen to what Paul says. Therefore I, a prisoner for serving the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, for you have been called by God. This is why we need to walk before the Lord. We are to remember that we were the name of the Lord within us. We are to conduct ourselves as the children of God. And we are. We are His children. It's a beautiful definition, by the way. When God calls us children. We have a noble heritage to live up to. Our vocation. Our calling. Our character as a Christian believers. We must, we, we must not bring disgrace upon our Lord and his church by means of a uh, character or conduct that would cause others to be repelled. 
This is why we need to be walking before the Lord, with the Lord, close to Him, so that we can hear His voice, we can understand when He talked to us, and we can grow deeper in the knowledge of God by studying His Word. Secondly, we are encouraged to walk in love. And you can preach about this matter all day long. And we still follow sword. Ephesians 5, 2, Paul says that live a life with love following the example of Jesus Christ. There it is. There it is. Remember, God so loved the world that he gave his son for us. It's all about love. Sometimes I have challenged my church members and the newcomers. If you are visiting, we have people from Somerset actually visiting us this morning. I just I was sad to hear that they moved here to, to Louisville. I, I'm coming to you and you, you are coming here. <laughs> He's teaching here at the dental school. So, so uh, we have friends from there. But uh, the year... It is about love. It is about love. Then Christ loved, loved the church so much that he gave his life for us. And I have told people that if you feel God's love here and you walk away and he said, I never come back because I didn't feel love. Oh, I didn't feel love to be loved. I don't blame you. Because church community is about God's love. Christ so, loved the world. Christ so loved the world that he gave his son, his life for us. Our Lord commanded his disciples to relate to each other in terms of love. Listen what he says. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. Very difficult sometimes. Very difficult. It sounds good when Jesus says it. You just love each other as I have loved you. Then we say, well, Jesus, who is, it is easy to love you, but this is my brother. Or this is my sister. It's unbelievable. Then Jesus said, well, listen, hey, I love you. And do you think that has been easy? Why don't you go ahead and pass it on and love each other? Because of God's great love for us, we are obligated to relate to each other in terms of Christian love. Listen to what Apostle John teaches in 1 John. He's, there is love, there is life, and there is your faith that you have love for each other. Without love, it is impossible for us to prove that we, are, we have a vital living relationship with Jesus Christ. If you have that love, your words, no, no, you, no, your life speaks louder than your words. This is why we need to be walking before the Lord. To be fulfilled by his love. To be able to love brothers and sisters around us. And then finally, <coughs> we are encouraged to walk as the children of light, with great wisdom before him. A few words about this. <clears throat> of course, we are the children of light. There is very little light within. But when you are walking before the Lord, his light shines through you. Echoes back to people around you. We are to separate ourselves from the moral evil associated with the living in the darkness of spiritual death. There's so much evil in this world and we don't have to preach about it. You just keep your ears open and eyes open, you, you got it. We don't have to preach about it. It is obvious. What this world needs, it needs, wor it needs words of wisdom, words of faith and words of grace, words of love and, and, and transformation. We must put, you and I, away and severe the relationship with those attitudes and habits that are characteristic uh, of the life of faithless. 
and rebellion against God. And there is so much that in this world. And we have to remember our command to function as the light of the world, which makes possible life and life of hope, to offer life and hope for people who are looking for it. But in order for us to do it, we need to be walking before the Lord. Close enough to hear what he says. And close enough to, to feel his love within us. Now the true wisdom. I think there's something funny in the book of James. James is saying if you feel that you need wisdom, you can ask it. Now how many times we really feel that we need wisdom? We truly feel and uh, know that we need wisdom. But true wisdom is a gift from God. And I am not talking about wisdom that you may get a little bit from the books. A little bit from the books. You can get some knowledge there, of course, and I don't underestimate. I've been going to school all my life. But the wisdom is that the divinely given insight that makes it possible for one to see through to the end of a course of action. Don't you admire wise people, spiritually wise people, when you talk to them? Many times they're a little bit older folks. We don't have any old people here. We have just a little bit more experienced people here and then less experienced people here. But you just admire them. And sometimes when you talk to this, I have had thousands of examples past my, during, through my ministry. You talk to these wonderful people and you realize after conversation, there's very little formal education, hardly at all. What a wisdom there is. What a wisdom there is. Wisdom of God. On His truth, on His grace, and on His love. You just, you just enjoy spending time with these people who are walking in front of the Lord, before the Lord, to find this wisdom and to share it and to bless their communities through this wisdom. This kind of wisdom comes to those who reverently and responsibly study the word of God and communicate with him in prayer. That's the only way to become wise in the Lord, to spend time with him, to study his word and spend time in prayer. Wisdom is need of everyone. Listen, please, what I say. Today, the church needs more wisdom probably ever before. We are dealing with challenges outside and within the church. As a United Methodist Church, this is a prayer concern for me to present to you. More wisdom than ever before to keep it right. Wisdom from God is an absolutely essential if we are to live humble and creatively in the home, in the church in the school, in the office, and in any of life's relationships. We need God's wisdom. Only way to get it is to be walking before the Lord, with the Lord, so that we can learn from Him, we can listen to Him, and we can hear what He says to us. And something to take home before we share the Holy Sacrament this morning. To walk with God is to walk on a happy road of life. And if I was to ask some of you here, you can say it has been a happy road. Not easy all the time. It has been a happy road. It doesn't mean I've been jumping and giggling all the time. Happiness is much deeper thing than that. It is a way that becomes more wonderful as the years go by. <coughs> There's a man called Enoch in the Bible in Genesis 5.24. Bible says that <clears throat> he was walking in close fellowship with God. Then one day <clears throat> he disappeared because God took him home. <coughs> this is you and I. 
Now, very few of us will be living as old as Enoch did. Guess how old he was? Barbara? 535. A little bit less than that. But you are exercising good faith. 365 years old. Now, very few of us will be living as long as Enoch did. Three hundred sixty sixty-five years walking before the Lord. Then all the Southern Bible says that God called him home. What a beautiful story. What a beautiful story. We have grieving families here, and they are thinking about their loved ones. Their walk before the Lord. Their spiritual wisdom, their care, their love, that they pass it on. And this is the best thing to share after you and I be gone. How we walk before the Lord. How we exercise His love and grace and truth. And how we gain that wisdom that comes from above. And we pass it on for the sake of God's kingdom. This is a beautiful story. But first of all, we need to be walking worthy of our Christian vocation. We need to be walking in love in Jesus Christ. And we need to be walking as the children of light with great wisdom given by God. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have invited us to walk before you this morning. To walk before you. Which is to say, staying with you so that we can always see you and we can always hear from you. In so doing, we will, be, we will live worthy for our Christian vocation, our calling. We are able to love them. And we are gaining that Christian wisdom, spiritual wisdom. And we are spreading that light that comes from you. It is in your name, Lord, we pray and we thank. Amen.